Hey, hey, everybody. It's founder Layroon. Getting ready to start the stream up. Getting ready to start the stream up. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are yeah, so able to participate in watching this. Um, I am going to build a level 5 cleric, uh, female Ganasse Tempest druid, or cleric, uh, her uh, domain is the Tempest. So, uh, yeah, say that five times fast. So, anyways, I'm going to get started. Um, again, I always have the, you know, the layout, the way I want to set it up. And usually I will have this character sheet stretched all the way out here. And this is part, basically how I would play. And since I'm doing a water theme, I'm going to, I got the background kind of a light blue color. I'm going to change the dice, kind of get the mood going here. Um, there we go. Some aqua blue looking. Cool. All right. So first thing I need to do is consider that this particular character is probably more at home near water, rivers, lakes, oceans, you know, maybe even swimming pools. Who knows? But the water Ganasse are a pretty interesting race. They come from the Elemental Evil book. So if you want to build one of these, um, you have to have the Elemental Evil player companion loaded, as well as the player's handbook. So if you don't own that content, it would be kind of hard to make these. The other thing is I want to also have open this Faiths of the Forgotten Realms, and I don't think I've loaded it yet. It's a third-party product that comes from the DMs Guild. And it's pretty nice. It's very supplemental to clerics and um, paladins. It kind of gives you more oaths and such. So I'm going to look this up. Yeah, it's called Face of the Forgotten Realms, and this is converted by Rob Tui and was written by a few other authors. So I'm going to load that. And that'll give me some more religious options, just in case I wanted to pick a god or goddess for this character. Um, I'll probably end up picking some kind of mythological type um, worship being. Probably, uh, you know, the Umberly or one of the gods or goddesses from the Forgotten Realms. So it kind of depends on, you know, what, what build we do and, and how this turns out. So first things first. Um, I've already grabbed a token for this character. Um, I'm not going to spend, uh, last stream I did, I spent like the first half an hour building tokens, uh, from scratch. So I'm not going to do that this time. I got a lot of flack for that. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and start building the stats. So this is a cleric build and more than likely this character is going to need to have wisdom. So I'm definitely going to start with a, a healthy wisdom. Uh, wisdom of 15 sounds good. Um, dexterity, I want that to be fairly good. 14 dex. And 13 strength isn't too bad. So I'm going 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. So I'm going to give him a 12 charisma, a... a uh, Probably an eight intelligence. So not the brightest guy in the in the pile, but you know, this is just the starting stats. I can always improve. Oh, well, let's see. So now I'm going to go ahead and start building from the background, and that's the second step. So you always do the ability scores first. Second step is backgrounds. And generally I'll try to pick something that's conducive to this lifestyle of this particular character. So I'm going to go to backgrounds. And I'll look down this list. I mean, I could pick an acolyte, which a lot of clerics pick. Maybe a, you know, a cloistered scholar, folk hero, far traveler. I think, though, I want to give this one a sailor option 
Yeah, so this person served on a boat for many years before they got their um, land legs. And maybe they served aboard a boat to kind of help navigate the waters and such. So I think I'm going to make this a sailor background, which is kind of, uh, kind of fitting. And with the sailor, you get athletics and perception. So that's not bad. And then supposedly you get some tools here, which I'll bring over later. And then you have a feature called Ship's Passage, where you get to uh, book voyages for a little bit cheaper rate. And you'll probably get a little bit more respect because you already kind of know how the ship works. And you get some uh, other trinkets. So you could roll on the table and get, get some strange trinkets if you want. So it's just a matter of how you want to build your character. So that would be all role play stuff, but still pretty interesting. So you get navigators tools too, and vehicles water, so you can pilot boats and such, which is pretty cool. So we'll get back to that. But before I close it, I'm going to go ahead and bookmark it. That way I don't have to come back in case I want to look something up. So I just got to remember athletics perception. I don't need to choose those twice. Uh, Fantasy Grounds won't warn you if you do end up choosing them twice. So you have to kind of pay attention. So now I'm going to go to Race. So if I go to the Races banner on the right-hand side, I want to look for Ganassi, which is right here. And that comes only from the Elemental Evil book. So you have to have that loaded in order to build this, or you have to build it from scratch, which takes a while. So now it asks me earth, air, fire, and water. I'm going to go with water. And when you pick a water ganassi, you get to basically, um, you get acid resistance, you can swim, you're amphibious, and you get a plus one on wisdom. And I think you get a, on your base, you get like plus two on con. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and um, select from here instead of from here. You can do it like this manually if you want. There we go. And I can just close this now. So it adds the traits to your abilities tab. So your features of ship's passage and then your racial traits are added here. And then your tools that you got from your background. So that's the third step is your race. And then when you go to your skills, you don't have any extra ones to pick yet, but when you pick your um, cleric skills, you just want to make sure that you don't pick those two. So I'm going to go ahead and start grabbing the class. So if I go to class and level, whoops, near the top, I click on this magnifying glass, I will have the option to drag the cast or the class over to this box. And if you can also drag it to the character sheet, but I wanted to show people how to level up easier. So I'm going to go ahead and open up classes. I'm going to scroll down. Now, if you notice, I have multiple ones. These are, you won't really matter which one I choose. However, I have to have certain books open to get the, uh, the domain of the Tempest. So I think it is in Xanathar's Guide. So you want to make, or it's in Sword Coast Adventures Guide. So you want to make sure you have those books open. But I'm going to go ahead and choose the, the cleric from the player's handbook, which will pull in everything. So now, at first level, clerics get to pick their domain. But the first step is these, uh, these two skills. So again, athletics and perception, I don't need that. So I'm probably going to go with medicine. That'll make this person useful. And maybe religion or history. Yeah, history. That sounds more like this kind of, you know, worldly person would know more about history than religions. And go ahead and click this OK. And now it wants me to pick the domain. And the domain I was going to choose was Tempest Domain. So that is one that uh, Lady Shell had suggested earlier. And the Tempest Domain is basically, you know, like Talos and Umberly, 
Zebwaim, the Devourer, Zeus, Thor, you know, all these gods of lightning, storms, and oceans seem to be of the uh, Tempest domain. So this is like, uh, you know, you get some basic uh, spells to use. So anyhow, I want to take a minute to think about this. So hold on. Okay, I think I've thought enough. So I have the Tempest added, and what that does is it gives you your domain notes, which was this, and then you get uh, your divine domain, which kind of gives you your domain spells, and it kind of tells you, you know, when you get them to be upgraded. Uh, you have a bonus proficiency as Tempest, so you can gain. Um, proficiency with martial and heavy so that is important and the reason why is because normally clerics don't get that so i need to notate it right where it says armor i'm going to say heavy armor and down below it's going to say martial weapons You don't put those there. Um, you can't get your your bonus for being proficient. So that's important to add that. So we'll come back to those. So right now I'm level one. I have maximum hit points. So I have an eight sided for my hit die. And then I have a constitution of, let's see, 12. So what I'm going to do is, well, you get nine there. So what I'm going to do is level up. So what, how you do that is you just drag this pin over to the right and then drop it back in. And it will level you up. It adds another layer to your character, basically. You don't have to open anything up. As long as the source books are open in your library, you can level up right from this window. A lot of people will go and open up the banner and drag it back over, which works. The only thing is uh, try to avoid dragging from different sources. Um, even though it shouldn't break, it can. So just keep that in mind. This way, this will always pull from the same section. So I'm going to go ahead and level up again. And I'm going to click on the um, Abilities tab. And you can see all my abilities are stacking up here. Do it, it'll be epic. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, t go ahead and level it up again. We're going to be up to level five. So at level four, they get an ability score improvement. Now you can also choose either that or a feat. I myself think that feats are kind of limited. I would rather just have uh, ability score increases because I think overall those are best um, when you know when you overall for your character. I thought about giving them Warcaster, which gives them a better advantage, and when they have uh, you know to check for their uh, concentration checks, things like that is better. But I, I just I don't know. I just kind of like the idea of having more um, ability increases than just having one feat that only risk really does one thing. You do get one ability score increase, but it's kind of minor. 
So what I'm going to do is I have two points to spend. So I'm definitely going to spend one on strength. And then probably one on dexterity or constitution. Hmm. Constitution give me more hit points. So I probably will do that. This character doesn't have to be uber quick, so. But a 13 isn't going to change much. So. Hmm. Let me look at this. Yeah, 15 isn't going to change either. Well, it does kind of. Yeah, it still stays. Yeah, it stays the same here in armor class. Maybe even wisdom or maybe charisma. Nope, charisma don't help much. I think I am just going to go with probably wisdom. Because that's the spell casting stat. So that will help a lot with spell casting. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over one more time this, this shield here. So all you have to do is just pick it up and drop it back in here. And it brings me up to level 5. So now all of my abilities should be added up to this level. All my racial traits and all my proficiencies up to this point. Um, then you have common and primordial for languages. So that is the only two languages this character has. Primordial is the language of the elements. So now we have a sailor, cleric level 5, tempest domain. There's the skills. So they have athletics, history, medicine, and perception. Um, they had the ability score increase, which I'm going to notate what I chose. Strength and wisdom. You have channel divinity. Channel divinity, destructive wrath. Destroy undead. Uh, you have your divine domain, ship's passage, spell casting, your tempest domain, and wrath of the storm. So Wrath of the Storm is kind of cool. You can thunderously rebuke attackers. Wow, that's pretty cool. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But uh, this is pretty uh, pretty much done here. Um, some of these can be automated. So later in the class or in this tutorial, I will will start building and borrowing the uh, books so we can add some automation in here. So inventory. So rather than going crazy and trying to pull over every little single thing I want or need. I'm going to use Rob Tui's parcels. My background was a sailor, so I will drag that stuff over. And it automatically puts everything from your sailor background in your inventory. Instead of having to make it or look it up, and go on the items list, it automatically brings everything over, which is really nice. And you got a nice silk rope here. That is sweet. So now I'm going to uh, look for cleric. And here's the starting equipment for a cleric. Now, this starting equipment is really just, you know, basic. I think scale mail is pretty good. And a shield, which I think is awesome. But I'm going to substitute this mace. I'm going to get rid of the mace. And crossbows look fine to me. And then you have all this other equipment. So you have like five days of food. I'm going to say two days of water, shield, scale mail. It doesn't look like you're carrying too much weight yet, even with the heavy armor. And that's somewhat heavy. That scale mail is almost like medium. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, it's a, it's a medium armor. So it's really not that heavy. But it does give you disadvantage on stealth checks. But not as bad as like plate. And I think scale mail makes sense for somebody that has the, uh, the water kind of domain. Or like this kind of look. Almost like a sea elf. 
We'll see. Where did you get the Rob 2E mods? Oh, those are available on the DMs Guild, and I'll show you those in a little bit, but they um, there's a pack that you could buy, or you can wait till Christmas on the 24th and the 25th. He's selling the whole thing for like 75% off. Right now, if you buy it, it's like 30 bucks. But if you uh, if you want to wait till around Christmas time, he's announced that he's going to have a big sale. It's going to be like 75% off everything. Or And if you already own some stuff, it'll still discount. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He's doing it as like a Christmas gift for the community. I mean, he makes a little bit off of it, but not a whole lot. Anyways, um, yeah, so... I'm going to organize this inventory right now, but I'm not going to go away until I get my, I got to have a, what do you call it, a, a trident. Who the heck would not want a trident? So I'm going to go to items. You know what? I'm feeling special today. I'm going to give this guy a plus one trident. That is sweet. Plus one trident. Right now it says refined trident. That's because it's not identified. So I'm going to identify it. And it is now a trident plus one. So to get plus one on damage and attack. This thing is also versatile. So I will have to make another instance of it later on. So we have this trident and a shield. And some scale armor. So this one's got the regular looking, uh, you know, Poseidon looking stuff going on. So now what I'm going to do is organize the inventory. So yeah, Ice, um, he does make a lot of content. And from time to time, he likes to give out prizes and such. And we give one out every Sunday. Uh, we give out some kind of prizes. So um, usually, though, during the sales, we're going to have a big show, like on the 22nd. And we're going to have all our friends on there. And we're going to drink an eggnog and listen to uh, Christmas stuff, hopefully. And we're going to get the old Yule log in the background and kind of interact with the community, I guess, and kind of make things fun for everybody. So let's see. I have a pouch. Now, the belaying pin, believe it or not, is a weapon. So it's, that acts like a little club. Uh, the amulet is probably something he, that this person wears. But I'm going to put it in their pouch for now. It's probably an amulet of their god. The alms box is religious thing. So I'm typing the location on the line next to the item. So there, that's going in the backpack. These vestments are religious clothing, like robes or something you'd wear during worship. So the lucky charm. I'll put that in the pouch too. Rations will go in the backpack. That silk rope is nice. That that's not cheap stuff. That's that's really expensive. Let's see. So as you can see here, it kind of indents everything, puts them all in order. And then I have scale, shield, trident, and the armor, and the bling pin, which I will remove from the backpack. There we go. It's basically a weapon. And then I have these crossbow bolts, so I want to grab a case for those.
and I'm going to grab a couple potions of healing. What the heck, right? So I'm going to change that to two. I had to identify them. All right, so the potions are in a pouch. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's all their, basically all their inventory. They have 10 candles, tinderbox. So it's pretty, pretty nice setup here. Um, now I think, um, yeah, that's nifty. Let's see. So level five, already got that dealt with. Okay. Got the inventory. All right. I'm going to go to the notes here. So I'm going to make this cleric chaotic good. Um, this has to be on the character sheet. Otherwise, spells like protection from evil or protection from good won't work correctly. I'm going to make this a female. Um, I think she's going to look like she's about 30, so maybe like 28. I don't know what her real age is, but she's going to be fairly tall. Only five foot eleven. Soaking wet, no pun intended. And I think she is going to worship some kind of god of the sea, so I haven't thought about it yet, but uh, I'm thinking Poseidon or somebody like that makes sense. Actually, Talos. All right, let me see if that divine book has anything in there. Well, let's see. I'm going to go to story. I'm going to filter this to the book, Face of the Forgotten Realm. And what's Bashaba? Hmm. Talos. The last worshippers attempt to mark each holiday with something of lightning and storms. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Talos looks pretty cool. And there's an event associated with her religion. So I'm going to add this. So it says, a great fury drives me leading me to the Taliesin Church as a means of mastering my penchant for destruction. Not to contain it, but to unleash it. And I don't see her doing that. Let's see. Witness the blinding display of storm power in the Gulf of Storms. I knew that it was, if it gave my soul to Talos, this power could be mine to wield, maybe. In battle, I witnessed a lone Tuscan fighter wreak, wreak havoc, screaming in his god's name. His passion and ferocity challenged me. You know what? I think I like that one. So that is going to be in the notes. So I just drug it down there. Didn't have to re retype it. So that comes from the, the background of the god. And now I'm going to open up the background that I shortcutted earlier. Okay. I work hard so I can play when the work is done. I enjoy sailing into new ports and making new friends over some ale. My language is as foul as an OT nest. I like a job well done, especially if I convince someone else to do it. 
I stretched the truth for the sake of a good story. I can see that. Being chaotic good, that makes sense. My friends know they can rely on me no matter what. I work so hard that I can play hard. Well, okay, I think we're good there. Respect, fairness, freedom. That's the one. The C is freedom. The freedom to go anywhere and to do anything. I could totally see that. Or I'm committed to my crewmates, not to ideals. I can see both of those. But freedom seems to, to work higher. Um, respect, I can see that too. But I'm thinking this aspiration. Someday I'll own my own ship, chart my own destiny. I like that, actually. It's kind of a sailor ideal. Yeah, it didn't take that long. Um, with Tempest, do they not have to worship one of the Tempest gods? Yeah, it gives you suggestions. Like, you know, you don't have to, but there's examples, and Talos is one of those. So, you know, storms, ocean, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't give you a direct, like, this is what you have to use. You can do Poseidon or, you know, one of those, too. Depends on the world you're in. That's why they don't force it anymore, because different worlds have different gods. Just as long as you understand that you're kind of related to the bodies of water and storms and such, then you're good shape. Yeah, Talos is one of those. Let's see. Um, what were your duty? Yep, so let's go to the bonds. I'm loyal to my captain first, everything else second. The ship is the most important. Crewmates and captains come and go. I always remember my first ship. In a harbor town, I have a paramour whose eyes nearly stole me from the sea. I was cheated out of my fair share of profits. I want what's due. Ruthless pirates murdered my captain and crewmates, plundered our ship, and left me to die. Vendage will be mine. I kind of like that, but it's a little much. So I think, um, in this case, uh, this one, as a loved one, or someone that he cares about, in a harbor town somewhere. Probably, her name's probably Brandy. <laughs> yeah, if you catch the drift. <laughs> Brandy, you're a fine girl. Okay, let's see. Flaws. I can't help but pocket loose coins and trinkets as I come across. My pride will probably lead to my destruction. I could see that. I'll follow orders if I think they're wrong. I'll say anything to avoid having to do extra work. Once someone questions my courage, I never back down no matter how dangerous the situation. I think that would be a flaw. Yep. Once I start drinking, it's hard for me to stop. <laughs> I could see that, but not for this character anyways. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. So then you got that. That. Okay. So now we're going to get to the Rob Twee stuff and all that good jazz. So the belaying pin is just like a bludgeoning weapon. We have two crossbows. And one trident. So now all I have to do is make one more version of the trident because it's a two-handed weapon. So you can use it both one and two-handed. So I'm going to make a two-handed variety of the melee part. The thrown weapon, you don't need to make another one. It's the melee. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit button on the bottom right. Now the rest of the stuff is kind of customization. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit button on the bottom right, click on the star, and that makes a new section. So this is going to be my uh, supplies or consumables. And then I'm going to also make another weapon. So I just clicked on the sword. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is equipped because it's technically the same equipment 
It's just I'm going to be using this as a two-handed variation. And see, now I have both of them here. Not a whole lot's going to change other than the damage. So I'm going to bring over a D8. This one has a D6, so this is the one-handed variation. This has two-handed, so that way you know which is which. And then I'm just going to bring over this text. So now I have a variation where I have a two-handed weapon, and I also have a single-handed, and then there's the throne variety. So that is basically how you can add your own weapons. And this one was magical, so I added in the plus one to attack and plus one on damage. So it has the same properties, pretty much. So that's done. So now what I'll have is three different attacks. A one-handed attack, a two-handed attack, and then a throne. So that's how you deal with, with weapons that have more than one attack type. All right, so now what I'm going to do is create the rest of my consumables. So right now, I'm in edit mode. I'm going to hit the star a few more times. And... I'm going to make these sections. So right now, this is the category name. I'm going to copy and paste it into these three cells. So now what I have here are three new areas in this one group. See the water skin. See and the candles. Now what I'm going to do is change this to preparation mode and set the quantities. Okay, 10 candles, 5 rations, 2 potions, and 2 water. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to change these to once because it's a one-time use. So now when I'm done, I can keep track of the candles I've used, the healing potions, the food, and the water. Now I'm going to right click on the potion and give it some functionality. So I'm going to click on add action, click this plus button, which is heal. And now I'm adding a healing function to the potion itself. So now I just have to define how much it heals. Well, in this case, in your inventory, if you have a potion like this, you're going to look up what it does for healing and it explains in here. 2d4 plus 2. So I'm going to right-click on the four-sided dice and pick up two of them. Drop it in here. In the bonus area, I'm just going to put 2 because it's 2d4 plus 2. So that's that. One more thing. Since I created this out of thin air, I'm going to put a description on here just so it makes it easier. So I don't have to go back to the other page. So I'm going to unlock this and unlock the description here. And then lock it. Lock that one back. 
that way you kind of have a you know an idea of what the potion does. This is new. Is this covered? Yes. It's covered in character creation. Yes. So this stuff, this consumable thing doesn't have to be here. This is more a convenience for you and your dungeon master. Um, I started doing this because I noticed when I was playing that people weren't really keeping track of their inventory because they hated keep to keep coming back here. So what would happen is I told them, okay, fine. Then just check them off as you use them. And then at the end of the session or before the next session, we can update the inventory because it doesn't automatically take it off. So, and plus you have the functionality of the healing right, right in here. So when you actually go, you can drag this. So here's the character. So if you had any wounds, you just drag it right onto yourself and it would it would heal you. It's really convenient. Um, the advanced character creation class goes over how to build your own races and classes and such. This is actually partially included in the character creation class. Although you bring up a good point, maybe to um, make the character creation class less complex, and shorter, maybe I should leave this stuff out. But it is kind of important. I don't know. I, I don't feel right about leaving people halfway when they can do a lot more with Fantasy Grounds. But a new person might get overwhelmed, so we'll see. Anyway, so that's that. Now I'm going to make another section in, or a, a category. And this one is going to be called Standard Actions. So I'm going to add power, which is a star. So standard actions are things that you can do instead of attacking or casting spells or running or whatever. So I'm going to go to the spells area. These are where the Rob 2E effects are, are stored. This is where they show up. And I have them loaded in the library. It's all these purple things here. So I'm going to go through here. And I'm going to filter this to 5E effects coding class features. And there we go. And I'm going to drag these four over to this area, right where this blank spot is. That way it goes to the right section. So this is dodge, help, hide, and ready. So these are four standard actions that you can take. And I'm going to add a custom one because I use a shield. And if I need to drop it and use it as a, you know, use this trident two-handed, I need to do that because shields actually give me this 18 armor class. And a shield is plus two. So you get your dex bonus plus two and your maximum plus two on your dex bonus. So he's pretty much maxed out for, you know, for natural armor. And you have disadvantage on stealth checks. But uh, when you use the two hand weapon or the crossbow, you can't benefit from the shield normally. So what I'm going to do is make a shield drop, which will make it convenient for the player to just negative two out of there so it, it'll minus two so they don't have to worry about it. Because otherwise you have to go in your inventory and unequip it, which is a pain in the butt. So I'm going to add an effect, and all I'm going to do is tell Fantasy Grounds to subtract the armor class bonus temporarily. I'm just going to call it shield drop. And then if I go into this area here, it's going to be self because it's basically only going to affect me. So the description, shield drop with a semicolon. And the uh, modifier is AC with two dots, the colon, minus two. So I'm just telling Fantasy Grounds to take away, mathematically, the bonus. So now what happens is if I tell the DM or the Game Master that
If I tell them that I want to attack two-handed, I can just click on the shield drop and it'll put the AC minus two automatically. So then I don't have to manually go into my inventory and unequip it. So I just would minus that out. And then when I pick my shield back up, I can come back up here as a player and remove the effect. So it makes it so much simpler. Yeah, you were in the beginning class today and this was not covered. Reason I asked about it. Oh, got it. Yeah, the beginner class is just an overview. Uh, character creation goes over this. And the advanced class actually goes into how to develop and create your own custom classes and races and backgrounds. Yeah, I hear you. So that's that. Now I'm going to make another section. And this is going to... Oops. This is going to be uh, for the racial abilities. So I just put racial traits, water ganassi, and then I clicked on it and it updates the name of the category now. So now I'm going to go to the spells category and I'm going to look for race traits and I'm going to go to the ganassi and these are acid resistance is one. That comes from your abilities here. And then you have this Call to the wave, which is cool. You also have, let's see, what was that other thing? It was like damaging. Um, swim, which gives you a swim speed. So I'm going to notate that on the front. Having a swim feet speed is very helpful, especially in the water. Um, let's see, call to the wave, merge with stone, mingle in the wind. Uh, wrath of the storm, I don't see that. So you can rebuke. When the creature's on five feet, you can see uh, hit you with an attack. You can use your reaction to cause the creature to make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2d8 lightning or thunder damage, your choice, on a failed saving throw, and half as much on a successful one. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Okay, so I'm going to first search to see if it's even made or not. Nope. So what I'm going to do is create this effect. So this isn't created, so I'm going to call it Wrath of the Storm. Okay. Now I'm going to right click on it and it says that it's a reaction. So in parentheses, put five feet and then reaction. So I remember. And it creature takes 2d8. So I'm going to make two different damage types, but I'm going to make one saving throw. And then I'm going to set up the usages. So this is where things get a little bit more complex. So what I'm going to do is add first the effect. And all it is is going to allow, or a cast. So what that does is it makes you, you know, have force the saving throw. So I'm going to go to add action, and I'm going to write add cast. Now there's no properties yet. But what it's going to do is on save, you get half damage. and it says when you okay, you can use your reaction to cause the creature to make a dexterity saving throw. 
So you would put dexterity here. And that forces the dexterity saving throw. And what it does is it keys off of your dexterity bonus and there. So anyhow, that's the save part of it. I don't have to do anything else. Now it says you can do thunder or lightning, depending on your mood. So I'm going to add two different damage types. So again, I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to click add action and add uh, damage. And I'm going to do that once more. So now, wait a sec. They didn't go to the right area. Dang it. So to get rid of it, I just removed the action there. So I got to add it to this one. There we go. So there's two damage lines. And it's thunder and lightning, I believe. Yep. So thunder or lightning. Okay. So here it says 2d8. So there's one damage type. So when you use this, you have to pick which, which damage type. The other is lightning. So that is that. So that takes care of those. So. Yep, Thunder, Lightning, 2d8. I want to make sure I read that correctly. So another thing is I don't want to leave this blank. That drives me nuts. So I'm going to actually take the description and put it in here if I can. So I'm going to go to the Abilities tab. I'm going to go to this Wrath of the Storm. I'm going to unlock it. And I'm going to copy this text. That way, I have the information on this back sheet. I don't have to come back here. So this is going to, let's see, first level, yep, OK, you get 2d8. You gain this feature a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier. You regain after a long rest. So Wisdom modifier in this case is three. So this person gets three uses of Wrath of the Storm. So if I turn this to Preparation, change that to three daily, which means it'll recoup after a long rest. And that should do it. Yep, three usages. Call to the Wave. Um, you know, shape water cantrip. When you reach third level, you can cast or destroy water as a second level spell once with this trait. And you regain the ability to cast this way when you finish a long rest. Constitution is your spell casting ability for these spells. So these are the two spells that I need to set up separately than the other spells that I'm going to have. And the reason for that is because I need to ensure that my um, cleric spells are based on wisdom, but these two happen to be um, based off my constitution score. So again, I'm going to go and create, I'm going to pull these spells over first to this section here. This is my racial stuff. So this is a natural ability. And you can cast it at second level, which is cool. And it refreshes after a long rest. So you can do one or the other. So let me grab those first. So I'm going to go to spells. And up here, 
on the group here. Here's the five EFX coding spells. So here's shape water. So I'm putting it in this category, so it's not with my regular spells. And then create or destroy. All right. And then preparation I get once per day. All right, so that's that. And now I want to look at the spells to see if they do offer a second level description, basically. So if I come here and I'm going to read the spell, it says you can create up to 10 gallons of water. At second level, you can create or destroy 10 additional gallons. So you're just going to increase it. So create or destroy water is 30 foot range, and it's a cube. But when you destroy or create the water, it's 10 gallons, but it's actually 20 gallons. So that's pretty crazy. And then the other is um, shape water. And I guess if this is cast multiple times, you have no more than two of its non-instantaneous active effects at a time so you can freeze water you can melt it you can change the color that's really cool and you can move through water easier so that's awesome so that's just a, a way to deal with water all right so now to make sure these are based on wisdom i take the metadata from up here on top and this group is all going to be under constitution so I need to change this to Constitution because those are what the spells are based on. So that's what that's for. So now the racial traits are done. Now I'm going to go to the class features, which is the cleric stuff. So I don't have a name for this character. I think I'm going to call it Bubbles for now. Let's see. Um, class feature. Cleric. Yep, they start here. So I'm going to make a new section, and this is going to be class features. Okay, so this cleric, they get a few different things. They have channel divinity. So let's see what the divinity is. Channel divinity, destructive wrath, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that over. And then you get destroy undead. Well, turn undead is basically what it is. So there you go. So now I want to make sure this is under wisdom. There we go. So those are wisdom based. And any other, let me think. Divine intervention. Let me see. Channel Divinity, Destructive Wrath is pretty cool. Starting at second level, you can use your Channel Divinity to wield the power of the storm with unchecked ferocity. When you roll lightning or thunder damage, you can use your Channel Divinity to deal maximum damage instead of rolling. That is really cool. So being that it's a Ganassi, and if you're using any water-based spells or, or thunder spells, 
in this case, the, uh, what was that, call to the wave or one of those uh, features. Oh, Wrath of the Storm. Yeah, that uh, that would definitely kick butt on that. Because then you could do 2d8, so that's 16 points of damage in one shot. So I think that that's pretty close. Let me see, what else? Destroy Undead. Channel Divinity, it says. Six level, as an action. Okay, there's Turn Undead. Yep, so you must choose, uh, then finish a short or long rest when you use Channel Divinity. Okay, let me see what the Wrath says. It doesn't have it. So what I'm going to do is change the usages on these. They're already at one, but I want to double check. See what they're set at. Now they need to be set to rest. Right now they're on one. So after a short rest, this cleric gets those class features back, which is really potent. Okay, so now it's just the spells. So first I'm going to deal with the bonus spells. And I'm going to change this back to spells. And all I'm going to do now is just add the spells that belong to the character. So right now, there's bonus spells that come with this domain. So the Tempest domain, it gives you Fog Cloud for free. So I'm going to go ahead and add this into my spells. Thunder Wave. Okay, Thunder Wave. Gust of Wind. Okay, so there's two of them, so I need to pick this one. Shatter. So that's the spells that they, the, the free ones. So you got a couple freebies on the first and second level spells. So now um, clerics get you know two or three cantrips. So if you go to your class description, which I should have made a bookmark to it, it tells you how many cantrips you start with down in this chart. So at level five you get four. So what I'm gonna do is change the filters down here. Level zero, cleric. And I get to pick four from here. So I'm gonna go with uh, guidance. I'm going to go with Spare the Dying, uh, Toll of the Dead, and Thaumaturgy. So those are my everyday, all day long spells. And base for those is Wisdom. So that way I make sure they all parse correctly. So now I get four first level spells. Technically clerics can cast any spell off this list, but you can only prepare up to so many a day. So definitely gonna do Cure Wounds, Bless, um, Command, 
and guiding bolt. So there's a lot of spells you can choose from to cast. And then there's second level spells. So I'm going to filter this to level two. And I'm going to go to, let's see, spiritual weapon. So it's going to be like a magical, uh, I was going to say pitchfork, <laughs> a trident. Um, silence. And one more. Uh, prayer of healing. Locate object. Spiritual weapon. Silence. You know what? I'm going to do locate object. A lot of people pass that spell up. It's pretty powerful. All right. So now I get a couple of level three spells. So I'm just adding the bare minimum, but, you know. So this character is going to get, um, let's see, Bestow Curse, Beacon of Hope, Animate Dead, um, Dispel Magic. That's very powerful. And what do you know? Water Walk. That's powerful. Yeah, because Dispel Magic, I don't really see anything else that's that great. So being able to walk on top of water is awesome. And it makes sense for the Ganassi. So that's awesome. So that would be the spells. So now everything is where it should be. Um, I even made a couple custom things that we didn't have. Uh, we have already gone through all this stuff here. Uh, acid resistance. Amphibious is you can breathe air and water. So I can put this down here. Oops. And swim. And I'm going to drag those over to their respective racial traits. Just so it's notated there, it's really not an effect. That way we have the notes. So there's preparation mode in which I'm going to go ahead and prepare these spells for the, for the day. This would probably be the maximum I can prepare, but you can have more on your list. You, it's just that I didn't drag them all over. So those are we're going to have prepared for the day. And then I'm going to change this to uh, combat. And this will be actions. So that character is a done deal. So I'm going to go over to the chat window. Do a right slash. Type the word save. That saves the campaign. Or if you're a player on someone else's table. That saves the, uh, the character. So I think that's about it. Uh, if I have any questions. Um, go ahead and ask while I'm here. Like I was saying earlier, we had the, uh, Rob Tui coding effects is what I use there at the end. And those are on the DMs Guild. Like I said, I'd wait till the holiday sale to, to buy them. Because you can buy everything then. Because he has more than just the, the coding effects. He has like that backpack thing I was showing you where you can drag over the equipment. He has like charts and tables that tell you what each class, uh, where they come from and what you get for bonuses. And it's just, just really handy to make the game quicker and easier. So I think uh, I've gone on long enough. It's 4.30. It's been a good hour. Um, that will make, yeah, I'm looking at it site now. And it's very, yeah. So... I think I'm going to call that a stream. Uh, I did that in about an hour, which is pretty good because sometimes I spend two hours on them. So anyways, uh, have a good night, and hopefully this will help you guys out. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, and there are a bunch of others uh, that I've created in the past.
that cover different builds and different combinations. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, leave your comments in the comment section on YouTube, or you can hit me up at uh, Fantasy Grounds College. That's uh, fantasygroundscollege.net. And if you're already a member, you know where I'm at. So anyways, take care, guys. Happy holidays.